and action. <laughs> yeah, listen, um, this is JH. Uh, I wanted to get a little more detailed with how to start the process on how to get into the post office. It's one thing to hear me say it, it's one thing for me to speak to me, and then there's another thing for me to text it to you. So what I'm gonna do is show you the steps on how to just start to get in. So you get into your computer, I don't know why I got my little cameraman there, and we're gonna just Google USPS uh, careers. Don't laugh at me, don't laugh at me. And we go in there and we look for careers. Once we find careers, we don't want to do this. This job help center garbage. No, 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 no. We don't want to do that. Postal hiring service, no. This is what we want to go to. Careers about USPS.com. Do you see that? There we go. And then we want to click search and apply. All right, this is the page you want to be on. See that? That's the page. This is what it looks like. All those other ones where you're saying, oh, you paid for this and you paid for that. You don't need to pay for it. This is the page you want to get onto. All right, if you need to slow the video down to half speed to watch this again, this is the page. All right, it's going to say about.usps.com slash careers. Search and apply. What you want to do is go search jobs. We're going to search jobs. Um, and this is what's going to pop up. This little tab. You're going to see your state. And you don't want to go to functional areas. You just want to pick out your state. So I live in, um, yeah, some of you know where I live, so we're not going to go there. But uh, we'll go down to, let's say, New York. We'll go to New York. Uh, scroll down to New York. Then we're going to start. Push start. This is what pops up. 89 hits. Search result. 89 hits for New York. This is everywhere in New York. Now, observe. At the end, back here, you'll see the date that this was uploaded. You want to try to apply to anything, anything that was uploaded today or within the last 24 hours. Why? Because so many people are applying. And if more than, I believe, is 250 people apply at the same time for the same position, you don't get a chance to get your assessment invite. It's not an exam. It's an assessment. Everybody's like, oh, you got the exam, blah, blah, blah. It's not an exam. It's an assessment, an assessment of your character. So let's go right here. We're going to go to Northville, New York. I don't know what this is, a RCA. Uh, actually, let's go into some of these uh, things right now. RCA, Rural Carrier Associate. This is not career. This is not career. I don't believe it leads to career. PSE mail processing clerk. This is at the plant. You see where it says next to it? Plant operations. If you don't have a driver's license, you can apply to anything at the plant. Plant operations, unless you're driving a tractor trailer. Mail handler assistant. Plant operations. Then we back to the RCAs and CCAs. CCAs will lead to career. That's your regular mail carrier. All right. So we got those few positions that we see. We're gonna try and scroll down a little bit, see what else they got. RCAs and that's it. We got PSC Sales, Service and Distribution Associate. PSC Sales. The sales means the person that sits at your window when you go to the post office. That is your, when you go to pay for your stamps, that's the person there. Distribution associate, that means you come in early in the morning or in the afternoon and you sort all the packages. That's what this is, PSC Sales Service and Distribution Associate. They sort packages early in the morning at your local station, at your local post office. It's not at the plant, you don't see here where it's at the plant. And this is what we're looking at again. So we'll go and we'll click something. Uh. Bum. Now, when you go there, it said pop up, uh, always allow. Let's check it out. See what he says. This is what happens. This was going to show up. This is a job posting period, 5 8 to 5 11. It has an exam requirement, blah, blah, blah. It tells you what the hours are going to be if it varies, 
Window training is high, blah, blah, blah. This one here says PSE holds a temporary appointment for periods not to exceed 360 days. See that? Not to exceed 360 days. It may say a temporary appointment, but when you see it says not to exceed 360 days, that's how all postal employees get into the post office right now due to union and all this other good stuff. I don't really like to get into the union information. That's not my thing. Anyway, postal support employees, and then they, they work 360, then they have a five day break in their service. Anyway, then they get hired back on. The benefit information, it tells you there. This one is starting out at 17 19 per hour. This is where you see all the stuff. People text me and they ask me, hey, how much do I make? I don't know. Unless you go in here and it tells you. It tells you everything that you need to know. Does it have insurance? It tells you right here. Benefit information. Non-career, it has, uh, you know, it has your pay status. Uh, holiday for six days. It gives you raises. Uh, it gives you insurance. It tells you everything. It tells you who is eligible to, supply, to, to apply. It'll tell you if you need a... Uh, driver's license and you go in there it tells you about your background check so on and so forth a lot of the questions that I get the answers are right here sometimes you just got to take a few minutes to read uh, so you see that now I would go to apply um, then you're gonna put your candidate registration if you have an account you click there to log on to your account if you don't you create yourself a new uh, candidate ID. You are the candidate. You want to create your own profile. This will tell you everything you need to do. Very important. When you get a password, text it to yourself. Say, this is not my thing. My, my son is recording for me. Back to what I was saying. You get a password, save your password. Text it to yourself. Once you text it to yourself, uh, make sure you don't forget it because if you try to log back in, it's a pain in the ass. They'll boot you out of the system and you gotta wait 72 hours. It's a government site. Make sure you create your profile. Make sure everything is filled in on your profile and then you move forward. I'm gonna give you a quick example of what it looks like on my phone. Uh, let me see. I have USPS Careers login. Uh, and can you see? Uh, I'm gonna log on. I'm just gonna pull up somebody's information. I'll pull up, uh, I don't know who the hell these people are. Uh, there we go. We'll just use this one. I'm going to sign you in. Are we following it? We don't, this is your, this is your candidate profile. Once you got your profile, there'll be job opportunities. You can look for your job opportunities through there. On this same tab, you can go into your specific applications that you apply to. See that? These are all the applications this specific person did. They applied to all of these. All of these. And then some. And you'll see some say offer phase extended. I can't zoom in. Offer phase extended, pre-hire list, application entry, pre-hire list. Now, let me go through this because I heard some bad information the other day. When you first put your application in, it goes into in process and you put your application in. That's the entry. Once you pass that application entry and you have met their qualifications thus far, you go to the pre-hire list. At that point, you're on the pre-hire list. At any given time, they can look through it and say, hey, you know what? This job is available. Let me send this person an invite. We're going to send them an offer. We're going to send them an offer to get on with the post office. That would be the offer phase extended. They're extending you the offer phase. This is the last step, offer phase. Application entry, then pre-hire list, then offer phase. Basically, after you send the application, government gets the information. They say, okay, this person has passed the basic qualifications. Now we're going to put them on a pre-hire list. 
Just keep watching your emails. After you watch your emails, you'll see some things coming in with your background check, fingerprinting, etc., etc. When you start getting that, that's when they're sending you the basic offer. They've offered you the job. If for some reason you apply to something and it says not selected, immediately says not selected, not because of your test score, but it says not selected. That means something in your in your actual profile is missing. It could be the dates for when you uh, where you were working, if you got a gap of employment or something's out of whack. Now, I applied to the same position twice in the same place. And at that same day, it actually went into in process. It was because of some uh, one specific day for that specific person. Uh, there was something added extra. You just got to make sure that your actual profile is up to par. Now, when you want to see what your scores are, you go to your candidate profile. Okay? This is your candidate profile with your personal information in it. All right? Cool. And then you just click the next page. Oh, man. I got to zoom in. My bad. My phone done froze up. Somebody out there talking about having a having an Android, but I don't care. We're going to go to the next page. Then we're going to go to the next page. Then you go to the next page. And then you go to the next page. And then the next page. <laughs> and then the next page. Then it shows you your assessments. Do you see your assessments? Once you see your assessments, scroll over. Check out your scores. Do you see your scores? This is where you find your scores. You go on your own profile, you go through your roadmap, you go through the next page, next page, next page, and then you'll see your scores. That's how you know what your score is. Somebody said that uh, you need to have a high score, the higher score, the better. That's not true. That's not how they select you. This is not a test. This is an assessment of your character. It's very important to understand that. It's an assessment of your character. Scores really mean nothing. Once you apply... There's 10 people sitting in a room and they all apply. The first one that actually finishes and gets their application through is the first person that's going to receive an offer extended. That's how they issue you your government ID number. So if your government ID number is 11111, the person that selected behind you is going to be 1112. They're going to be they're going to fall in that row. Has nothing to do with your score. Nothing to do with your score. They won't allow you to continue if your score is under 70, but that's not how they select you. Someone said, oh, the better you score you have, the better the chance you get to get in there. That's not the case. There's people that have 75 scores and are in there faster than somebody else that has 100. You know why? Because they took their time and they got their stuff and all their stuff was situated. And that is the basic first step to get in there. Again, in order to get your to get your application started, this is your steps. Can't forget your steps. Uh, I don't know. I'm not good with computers, so don't laugh at me. <laughs> We're in different ones. This is the first page you need to go to. Search and apply. This is what it looks like. Do not go to any paid site. It'll tell you before you apply, job application, create an account, log into your account. You might want to go to log into your account first or create the account or just search your jobs. Find something in the area. Search your jobs. Now, if you don't see anything that specific day for your area and you live down in uh, Manhattan, you know what? Apply anywhere else in the state. Apply just so you can get that assessment. Once you get that assessment, you can get that score. So when something does pop up in your area, all you have to do is apply your profile with that score that's in there to that specific position. You just take and you apply and you say, do you want to log into your account? You log into your account and then it says you've already taken this assessment. We'll be in touch. You're already ahead of the game. And yes, you can apply to every single one on there. 
every single one without a problem. If you get 30 offers, you can accept only one at a time, but you want to get those assessments taken care of. That's the key. Get your assessments taken care of. Then when something pops up in your area, you automatically apply to that two, three o'clock in the morning when they pop up fresh and then you're ahead of the game. That's how you uh, take your steps to get in. And if there's nothing in your state at this moment, if you live out in the middle of nowhere, that might be some of you, a little nowhere, yeah, where there's a little bit of dirt road, and all that stuff going on, yeah. Anyway, um, apply to different states, anywhere in the country. That score goes with you anywhere in the country. And then when something does pop up in your area, you're good to go. All right, my son got to get to work. I've used enough of his, uh, his phone time.